Good day, McVeigh, and happy Friday. Good morning, boys and girls. Please stand to honor our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Boys and girls, you may be seated. All right, let's get to our birthday book. Now, yesterday was a snow day. So let me look it up. No birthdays from yesterday, but for today, happy birthday to Zainab Kalfan in our kindergarten and Miss McGee. Okay, boys and girls. So I hope you had a good time uh, with our snow day yesterday. And here we go, ready for a fun day of learning today. A couple of updates. So we have an update on the Ant Project. Remember the Ant Project that I spoke about? Somebody did some research. So Yoni, thank you, Yoni, did some research. I asked, how are ants helpful to our environment? How do ants help the earth? Ants are little creepy, crawly things. He said, ants turn and aerate the soil. So um, the dirt, in the if we were to walk outside and stand uh, on the grass, beneath the grass would be dirt. And to keep that... Uh, dirt uh, here and all other places good for growing it has to be aerated you have to get air in it ants help aerate it because when they crawl through it they create pockets where air can get in so things grow better so he uh, so Yoni said ants turn and aerate the soil allowing water and oxygen to reach the plant roots exactly so if the uh, soil is pressed all the way down, the water can't get down where it needs to go and neither can air. This helps seeds grow. Without water and oxygen, they would not. They also eat a wide variety of organic material that helps to keep our soil fresh. Yeah, so uh, something that's organic is from the earth. But some of the things from the earth are not so good for us. We learned about even poisonous mushrooms. So ants can eat some of that stuff and make our our soil better for growing. So thank you, Yoni. Today, we're doing a project. Uh, this is from Lena Bala from Room 106. Uh, so this is about, I, I don't know if you remember, uh, a while back I spoke about... Uh, endangered speeches and I'm thinking that it may have been Matthew who said uh, well here are some endangered species and and we learned about uh, polar bears and some other endangered species well this is about a very endangered species and this is coming like I said from Lena Bala so the Eriamote cat the Eriamote cat is a species of leopard. Now, I don't have a picture, but I do have a beautiful picture of a rose. And I love that drawing. Good job. But you can imagine if it's in the leopard family what it looks like. Okay, but the Eriamote cat is only found on a small island in Japan called Eriamote. So the Eriamote cat is critically endangered. That's that's different than just endangered. So there's only a very small population still left. So in 2007, now that was a good many years ago, 13 exactly, there were only 250 in the world. So that's a, a critically endangered species. So they are generally active at dusk and dawn. So that's when it's sort of twilight outside. And in addition to that, they usually live alone, and maybe that's one of the reasons why they're endangered. I'm not sure. We certainly would need some more um, information on that. Uh, so, I don't know why Lena decided to study ear remote cats, but it's an interesting project because it's probably an animal you haven't heard of before. So if you could share with us, Lena, why you decided to study these cats, um, that would be great. 
Okay, now it's time for our Getting Smart Through Art. So today we have some drawings from the following students. This is Nick in the Miss Gallery's class. Good job, Nick. This is coming from Miss Sullivan's class. She did the whole page. This was Geo. Good job, Geo. Here's another one from this is Isadora from Miss Sullivan's class. Nice work, Isadora. She sketched it in pencil. And this is Jayla from Miss Sullivan's class. Nice work, Jayla. We have many more for tomorrow. So finally, for today, boys and girls, we have our mighty kind moment of the day. We'll get our drum roll. Dun, dun, dun. So the mighty kind moment of the day today is coming right out of our own lunch program. And it was reported to me by one of our lunch teachers who said this, while at lunch, one of the classrooms didn't have whatever they needed. So in other words, they were short a bagel and we had to wait for another one. Somebody who had a bagel, hadn't touched it yet, offered to give theirs to the person who didn't have one. Think about that. So we're all hungry, it's time for lunch, and we're short one of the things ordered. And that can happen because we all make mistakes. So instead of getting started, you give yours away and you are the one that waits. Now, here's how it gets even more kind. The person who didn't have one said, no, you eat it, I'll wait. So think about that. Back and forth, what that shows is how one person cared about another and that other person cared right back. That is what we should be doing every single day. That is mighty kind using your mighty mind. Love that. So I want to thank the boys and girls that did that. You know who you are. And also for the information. And we can all do just about the same thing by always thinking about others in every situation. And it doesn't mean letting somebody else have the bagel that you should have. It just means thinking about others in a situation and seeing how you can spread kindness. Why? Because you're a mighty mind. Not only that, you're a mighty kind, mighty mind. And every day, boys and girls, it's a great day to get smart and be kind to both each other and the earth. Let's have a wonderful day.